Okay, well, I guess we'll get started. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Um, just want to thank you for joining us today. We've got folks on the line from coast to coast, so good day to you all. Um, Horizon's aware that many people don't can't join the hundreds of uh, Archibus users at Nexus um, every year, so we always try to bring some of it home. So that's what we're doing today. Basically, some of the most interesting things we saw, liked, learned, um, some of our ahas, and just some highlights from the event itself. So um, we some housekeeping. This is more of a presentation than more interactive, as some of our webinars have a lot more Q&A. Uh, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so we're really hoping to be able to just kind of motor through this um, and then watch for some great things uh, in the next weeks and months um, where we're going to do deeper dive webinars, um, some additional training and workshops. So the agenda for today is um, going to be short and sweet. It's a format that we've used in the past and that seems to work really, really super well. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes for, uh, for a number of our people that were at Nexus, um, just to cover different, different perspectives. Um, at Nexus, there's a university, um, so sort of a technical training. There's also business partner meetings um, that, that has a unique perspective. And then there's also the conference itself where we get to hear from um, some really great um, organizations and people that are doing um, awesome things with the tool. So uh, I, think, I think you'll find this uh, informative. Uh, we're going to start with Wayne Lico, Managing Partner, and then uh, we'll be going down through uh, Jasmine, who's a business analyst here at Horizon. Garrett Henry's joining us. He's uh, an SME and trainer. Uh, we also have Ellie Yakim. He's a business development account manager. Um, and then I'll wrap up at the end um, and uh, do my highlights of, uh, our, of Nexus. So Wayne, welcome. Thanks, Ayanna. Um, one of the uh, the main themes of the Nexus this year was this idea of connecting the dots and realizing the uh, the possibilities. So I tried to pull out a couple, two or three points that that really tied to that uh, theme. And uh, if you go to the next slide, the the first one that we saw in terms of presentation had to do with smart cities. And for a lot of us, there's a lot of these interconnected Internet of Things uh, that, that are tied into that. And it's really difficult sometimes to find your place in that big picture. Um, but there were some key points that came out from the smart city had to do with this idea of uh, collaboration and, you know, whatever our roles are within the industry. If you think of this idea of smart cities, uh, what was obvious is that the um, uh, within any of these smart city initiatives, there's universities, there's government, there's private sector, and we all kind of have a role that we play in that. And I think it's key to try and kind of stick to what we do well and, and find our place. So it, it really brought it home in terms of the whole smart city thing for me that um, as many as many moving pieces as there are, there, there's an opportunity for us for each of us to contribute. Uh, there was also some discussion on the idea of the kind of next generation workplace and, and millennials. I've been to a couple of conferences where they've talked about millennials and and what that workforce means to uh, to the industry, both from a working perspective and and from from an environment perspective and how there's some shifting priorities around that uh, whole idea of um, you know what what the expectations are from what kind of workplace we're going to have that, uh, that to work together uh, and the other key thing that's that statistically I guess has been brought out is this idea of um, uh, maybe they're not the Millennials aren't as hard working as as some of us may perceive them to be but statistically that that's actually contrary that they are still very dedicated and, and looking to uh, to advance and uh, to work together so the key message there again was this idea of collaboration this uh, this multi-generational collaborative environments that we're looking at uh, I think in Canada st statistically 
I don't know if it's in the next year or very shortly, the millennials will represent the uh, largest voting group. So in that sense, it's uh, it's a shift in uh, how things are and, and being aware of that is pretty important. Uh, next slide, please. The, the other point, I guess, in terms of this idea of connecting the dots, this says more to do with Archibus from a technology standpoint. Uh, this is just a, an example of the strategic financial analysis that Archibus introduced uh, last year. And really what this is tying to is the idea that the data is interconnected, the systems are interconnected, and the information that we're looking to extract from a tool like Archibus is very interconnected. Uh, you know, what, what a tool like the SFA can do is bring together a variety of the uh, components um, from across the enterprise, from across the organization. So it's um, uh, really, again, the idea of connecting the dots and, and realizing the, the possibilities are driven home by this idea of how technology can bring this all together. Those were a few of the key things that uh, I found, so uh, thanks for the time. Thanks, Wayne. So next up, we're going to have uh, a few insights from Jasmine. A lot of you probably know her. Jasmine, you ready? Hi. Yeah, I'm ready. I think you should see my screen now. <coughs> Excuse me. So th thanks, Wayne. Um, mine's a little bit longer, so and a little bit more to go through. So I'll I'll get right into it. Um, so as Diana mentioned, I'm a business analyst at Horizon, uh, and I attended some great sessions at Nexus this year. Um, some university sessions, uh, as Diana mentioned, as well as some uh, client presentations to see how uh, they implemented Archibus and, and how it's being used, which was very cool. Uh, so my slides are specifically around the real estate portfolio management, uh, building operations, and uh, operations with service level agreements. All right, so the first topic is the lease portfolio console. Uh, so the lease portfolio console was actually added uh, in a past version, version 21.3 of Web Central. Um, but Archibus has been continually improving uh, this console within the lease administration application. Uh, so the console now shows all, all leases, regardless of whether they're active leases or not. Uh, whereas in previous versions, you could only see uh, leases that were signed. So only those leases were manageable through the uh, portfolio console. And now you can manage everything. So a, a lease manager has vi visibility into um, all leases through the console, so leases that may not be finalized yet, that you're still adding some detail to that type of thing. Um, and from the main tab of the portfolio console, you can define alerts um, and export to PDF, Excel, and Word um, for a nice export of, of all the lease criteria that you've put into the console. Uh, the second uh, slide is a, still on the lease portfolio console uh, and if you click on a lease from the main screen you're taken to this lease details tab uh, which shows you information on the lease like uh, contacts, recurring costs, uh, responsibilities and clauses, options, amendments, communication log, all that stuff that's been available on the lease um, in past versions of Archibus as well. Um, but they do have added here the cost profile, so you can access and manage things like indexing and uh, common area maintenance agreements, chargeback agreements, right from what's inside the console as well. Uh, as well, you can edit uh, your general lease information um, in the, with the panel up top. 
So not a new feature to 23, but thought it was worth mentioning in this section as I got to the, the new part. So the new part of the console in 23 is uh, the profile, the ability to look at a lease profile. So they've added uh, a profile button from the main screen, the select lease tab, and it takes you to a third tab in the console now uh, that brings in more information about uh, where the lease is. So in this case, it's the building, some property information, um, giving you the general lease information, and then all the same information you saw on the lease details tab, but in a read-only format. Uh, and you can export this into a Word report. So that is a new feature of 23 for the Lease Portfolio Console. Okay, the next uh, topic is around parcels in Arcabus. So as part of version 22, our class included new functionality for managing land parcels and the taxes associated to them. Uh, the first part of the functionality is a new view called Manage Parcels, and it's added into the cost administration application of the real estate module. So this view allows you to define the parcels that are associated to a property and include things like the parcel name, the block, lot, location, description, uh, latitude and longitude. Um, also can be associated is a map URL to the parcel to actually depict the area on a GIS map. Um, so from the manage view, you can also export the information for multiple parcels to Excel, uh, or you can export the information of a single parcel to a Word document as well. So a nice new view for managing that information. Um, the second part of the functionality is the addition of parcels in the cost wizard. Um, so again, this is in cost administration. Um, and for those that may not be familiar, the cost wizard is used for managing recurring scheduled and actual costs associated to properties, buildings, leases, accounts, and now parcels. So after entering your parcel information into the manage parcels view, oh, or you can do it through the add edit wizard, the a parcels tab was added in that view as well to manage it in both areas. Um, you can select those parcels from the cost wizard now and associate any recurring costs, um, any one-time scheduled costs, and then make those into actual costs for charging back and running reports. Uh, so another the, or the third item that kind of goes with the parcel functionality uh, is a new view called Manage Tax Action Items. Uh, it's also located in the cost administration application, and it allows a property manager or cost administrator to organize tax, tax activities that serve as reminders for tax-related issues, like um, deadlines for filing a tax report or paying a tax bill. So you can define the actual action types that you use, which aid into the actual management for that item. Um, and Archibus comes with a set of out-of-the-box tax action types, and then you can add to those or modify the existing ones if you need to as well. Um, so specifying a, a date required and a status, you can use this to kind of uh, organize and manage any tax action items that, that you have to remember. Um, and, uh, there were some discussions this year uh, throughout the university sessions around uh, implementation considerations for the real estate module in particular on this session that, that I attended. So we talked about things like uh, naming conventions, 
using the ISO um, 3166 standard uh, for using standardized country codes and state and province codes, thinking about uh, scalability and the use of archivists when other uh, areas come on board, uh, and leveraging industry standards that are out there for naming conventions. Um, so the, the one I referenced, the ISO, is more for the country code in states and provinces, and then we got into talking about kind of, okay, how do you set up site codes and building codes, and also in Archibus is this automatic lookup feature that allows you to not show the code and, and bring in other fields of information. Um, so having a discussion around that, uh, specifically in the implementation phase and setting up how you want to to handle those. Um, the other item we talked about, so with definitions, we talked about the importance of defining what is a property, what is a parcel, uh, what is a site, what is uh, a piece of equipment asset versus a structure. Um, so these types of discussions should happen at each organization when we're implementing the real estate module and using a simple diagram to depict the relationships will be worth a thousand words for managing property information, uh, understanding the data that you have in the system and reporting on that data. As well, we talked a bit about integration, so uh, about what is the system of record. There was an interesting discussion about integrating with the financial system uh, in the cost application for pulling in PO information and actual cost uh, numbers using a connector, um, where Archibus was a system of record for the building, lease information, areas, that type of thing, and the financial system being the system of record for the actual cost and how they can both be, be used together and, and leverage the information from that, that source system of record. Um, so this was just a point to to identify that there are lots of possibilities with integration um, throughout all the modules in Archibus, but this session particularly was on the real estate module. All right, so that's it for real estate. Uh, and now there are some, a couple of slides I have here on the new functionality for building operations. Um, so the first one is on parts inventory and the ability to define and manage multiple storage locations for parts is now available in 23. Having the right resources at the right time is important for executing your work efficiently. So this feature set allows you to associate parts to multiple storage locations. Um, Purchase new parts, create a, a purchase order for receiving those new parts into a storage location, and transfer parts between storage locations or requisition parts between different locations so that uh, if you are moving parts around, you have the right uh, available quantity in the right areas. Um, so you can see in the slide that new views have been added to the inventory manager process. Um, for defining st storage locations, defining subroom locations, um, managing the parts inventory. So it's kind of like a console view. I think the next slide shows that one. Um, managing your purchase orders and then your supply requisitions as well. So lots of uh, a new feature set around parts inventory and building on. Oh, I meant to, uh, I forgot the last point on the previous slide was around the quantity adjustments. Um, so also as well, in 23, there's been some changes around when parts get deducted uh, from inventory. So in previous versions of Archibus, uh, parts used on work requests were not deducted from inventory until the work request was actually closed and archived. Um, and in version 23, parts are now deducted from the available quantity when the work request is completed rather than closed. 
Um, so any subsequent change to parts on work requests that occur between completion and closing um, will happen immediately. So if you've changed that you actually used five parts instead of three, it will deduct that difference uh, automatically as soon as you make the change. Um, similarly, if you add a new part uh, in, when the status is completed, it will automatically uh, adjust the inventory of that part being added or removed. Um, and as well, with the ability to reissue a request after it's been completed, uh, the system actually backs out the changes that are made to the parts inventory. Um, so it corrects any parts that were used or, or on reserve for estimation and allows you to add them again as you go through that process. So ma making sure that you have the most accurate uh, parts information as you go through the, the workflow of the request. Um, this slide, manage parts inventory, is just a slide to highlight the new, this new kind of console view uh, where it includes information uh, like storage location and uh, ability to requisition between storage locations, um, add a purchase order, and add to inventory. So some really nice new functionality with parts. Okay, so some other building up enhancements. Uh, so version 23 now includes an independent craftsperson completion status. So this means that when two craftspeople are assigned to a work request, uh, both craftspeople have to complete the work request before the actual work request status is updated to completed, um, which is typically a trigger for supervisors to come in and verif verify and close the request. Um, so whereas in previous versions of Archivus, as soon as one assigned craftsperson completed the work request, uh, it was removed from the queue of all the other assigned craftspeople because it only took one craftsperson to mark it as complete in order for uh, the work request status itself to get updated to completed. Um, so this now uh, includes a check where when there's multiple craftspeople on a request that all people have to have completed their portion of the work in order to go back and update the actual work request status. Uh, so the next one is on self-assigning as a craftsperson. So this feature was actually added in version 22. I thought it was worth mentioning again um, that there's a setting now on the work team. So for people who are familiar with the building operations module, it uses wor work teams to group together uh, maintenance staff for craft people. And there's a setting on there that you you can configure to allow individuals to self-assign themselves. So you don't have to uh, give the privilege, but it's there configurable. Um, and basically, if you, if you have it, set up or self assigns enabled on the work team, a craftsperson will have the ability to view the work requests that are unassigned to an individual and they'll have a self assign button either from the building operations console or from a mobile device. Um, and they can assign themselves to the work request. And that automatically creates a craftsperson record for them and sets the status to issued and in progress. So it's a great feature for, for improving efficiency when there's maintenance staff who can pick up work that might be happening in a nearby location without having to actually be assigned by a supervisor. Um, new to 23 is the ability to specify a 24-hour service window within um, the response parameters of a service level agreement. Uh, so in previous versions, uh, a 24-hour window was not available. You had to define a service window that was a minute less than 24 hours. And now in the SLA 
console with with the building ops console enabled you can there's a little checkbox for a 24 hour window and it just sets, sets it up for you so that's nice and then the last one um so archibus is continually improving the performance of the building operations console um, there's just based on the volume of data that some people see in the console like a service desk that or um, a front desk that sees all the tickets that are all in the system always um, archibus has included some application parameters that help you control things like if data should be loaded at all when the console opens and you'd have to use a filter and hit show to, to see data um, if the groupings of data so in the building ops console you can group by status if those should be expanded or collapsed when the console opens how many work requests should be loaded under each grouping and then if you said you know, only show me the first 50 and then you'll have a more button to show you more if um, you have more than 50 in that grouping. Um, there's some auto close parameters to say any work request uh, in the completed status that's been completed for more than 30 days uh, automatically close and archive those requests. So there's application parameters to set up all all those types of uh, functionality um, and then so those are all user definable parameters and as well some core improvements have been made um, around in the code on how the grids work uh, to improve load time and as well as refresh time when you're working in the building ops console for a long period of time Okay, and the last one for building ops um, is on the new service desk role helper. Uh, it's a, the service desk roles are a powerful tool in building ops uh, for use with service level agreements. Uh, they're used to, to do lookups on who should, who should action a particular step on a work request or information on the work request. So for example, when a work request comes from building A, the building manager should be notified of the, of the work. But maybe it doesn't route to that person specifically, they just need an email notification. So you can use the service desk role to look up things like, okay, if, it cut, if the work request comes from building A, then we need to send it to this person. Um, so a dynamic uh, feature, so you don't have to do it on all of your SLA name a person on on all of your SLAs it will look up for you automatically <clears throat> so in previous versions the service desk roles had to be created with Java code uh, due to their their complexity um, so this tool is a really nice new feature <laughs> that allows you to define service desk roles without the need for Java code so Acrobus has created a, a user interface with with um, checklists and buttons uh, that actually build out your service desk role um, using a, a nice front-end view. Um, so we could do a whole session on this <laughs> service desk role helper, so I'll try to keep it high level. Um, it basically provides three options for defining criteria for the role. So you can use a single employee field, so for example, um, notify the requester so it'll look up who made the request uh, and action that particular person the second one is using a criteria based on request uh, information from the request and from the employees um, so this might be something like this list of employees can do an approval on this request if the division and department on the work request is the same as the division and department assigned to the employee, that type of scenario. Um, you can also use a employee security role. 
So a, a service desk role is different from a, a security role, but you could say, you know, notify all the people that belong to this Archibus security role when this happens on the request. Um, and then the last option is using a custom SQL where clause, and it gives you a, uh, a um, description box to type into. So if your service desk manager is comfortable with SQL, they can use that option to just enter in the where clause. Um, lastly, it's not shown on this slide, but after you define the service desk roles, you can test them right from the helper to see if it's working as you expected. Um, so you punch in a work request code, um, say go, and it, it should return you the list of people based on your selection from up top of, of who would do that step. So really cool uh, new tool for building ops and, and making the service desk roles easy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, now we won't do, like I said, we're not going to do Q and A. So I'm going to uh, bring us right into uh, Garrett's presentation. Um, and uh, thanks very much, Jasmine. That was really informative. And um, the nice thing about doing these 10 minute, 10 minute kind of things is that we are getting different uh, views from um, from the various uh, attendees that that went from. Horizon. So, Garrett, welcome. Oh, are you there? Um, seem to be muted. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Hello. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, my name is Garrett Henry. I uh, was attending the Nexus conference as well and uh, went through quite a bit of the university uh, sections and topics and, and items like that. I managed to pull out a couple of topics that you guys might be interested in. Um, three different topics that I want to get through. Uh, one's the automatic lookups, the second one's the VPA grouping concepts, and the third one is home page editing. Uh, with these three concepts, we can briefly talk about them real quick and I'll show you some of the pros uh, of some of these new functions that are inside of version 23. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the automatic lookup. So to different fields, you can pull in and automatically uh, look up. Now let's put you guys into context. What's automatic lookups? Well, um, one of the things you guys deal with all the time with Archibus is the primary key fields are usually code-based fields. So either equipment codes or building code or room code, all these different codes that you guys deal with. Now, with that being said, our, it, it'd always be nice to have a report or a, or a dialog box that would be able to be able to pull another field other than that code. For example, if you have organization code, you want to pull in the full text name or building code, you want to pull in the building name or address field or something like that. So that's where the automatic lookups comes into play. So Workbus has released this new functionality that allows you guys to pull in these codes and map them to an actual value in a lot of the product. Now what this does is allow you guys to add it in without a customization. So a lot of a lot of clients are looking at this as a customization but now is not. So this is something you guys can go in and personalize yourselves and turn this functionality on. Now it has to be turned on, it turns on globally. Once you turn this functionality on, you can then tell which field that you want to be able to pull up and map up to your codes. Okay, so what this does is it reduces that need for customization. I literally had a client, I think two weeks ago, three weeks ago, who was coming to me and saying, oh, I need to add building code, the building name field, all my views, and looking at it as a customization. I'm like, well, you're, you're running version 23. You can use your automatic lookups and it automatically drops it in. We turned it on, dropped it in, and it showed up, and there was no need for customization at that point in time. It's just education piece, and that's all it was. So visually, what does that look like? Well, if I go ahead and have an example here, on the left-hand side, you can see I have a list of all my departments. If I go and I essentially turn on that um, automatic lookup, uh, I can actually dictate saying, I want the actual name of that department to come into play. And that's what we see on the right-hand side, is you can see the name showing up. Uh, you can either do it in a concatenated format, which is the top of box where you see the number and the name side by side, or just the name itself, and you just want to replace the number with the name itself. 
And again, you can use this functionality for things like departments, buildings, uh, employees, uh, rooms, and so on and so forth. So there's a whole gamut of them uh, as examples, essentially any table that you're referencing. Now, with that being said, I showed an example here of a pivot table or view analysis view, but this also shows up in a whole other gamut of values. So again, you have the um, pivot tables that you, you can use. Uh, view, we call them view analysis views inside of Archibus. You can also use them inside of edit form. So here's an example where on the left, I don't have it turned on, but on the right, I do have it turned on. You'll notice just below the actual edit form will be the full text name. And again, that references back to that table or if you're filling it out as you're filling out a form. For example, that's what I have in the bottom right. I'm looking for a organization, instead of typing the, the number or the code, you can actually type the name and it actually searches through the names as well. So therefore you can actually use that as a search criteria when filling out forms as that automatic flyout. So that's very helpful inside of uh, edit forms. Other aspects is trees. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of uh, clients have the ability where they say, oh, I just want the billing code, but I want the address beside it. And this is where the, you have the example of adding that full text description along with the codes in the trees as well. So trees like this one's an example here as a organizational tree, but that could be your location tree as well. And on a lot of the other trees as well, pulls in that, that value automatically. You can also do it in charts. Uh, in the charts, it is limited to only the HTML-based charts, which is the new charts that are coming out, uh, not the flash base. So those that uh, are using the flash ones, just be aware it does not work in the flash base concepts. But here you can see an example where it does pull in the code as well as the name side by side. Uh, so therefore you can reference that uh, very easily. So that's the concept uh, with that, uh, that value. Again, something you turn on, you go and you configure what those are uh, as part of that workflow, and therefore uh, it suddenly comes, uh, starts being used all the way across the product. So it is global. It's not something you have to go into each individual view and be able to preset independently. So very nice in that nature uh, because everybody uh, benefits from it. Second topic I wanted to get through is VPAs. A lot of you may be using VPAs today. Uh, one thing Archibus has uh, come out with is VPA grouping. Now, what does that mean? Uh, but essentially, the ability to be able to group your VPAs. Let's put you guys in context. Uh, a lot of time, you may have a VPA uh, set to a user. Uh, it could be a billings list or something like that. And therefore, you have it to 200 users to have that billing list. Well, then, if you want to change that, you now have to go through each one of those different users in order to change that VPA. VPA, so it's a big exercise. So what Archibus has come out with is VPA groups. So what this allows you to do is be able to group together your VPAs and apply them to a group or a set of either users or roles. And this, what this allows you to do is be able to set one restriction and apply it across the board, uh, which is really nice, especially if you have to change that restriction quite frequently. That's the ability to set that restriction up and then uh, group it together and then be able to delineate it down into your uh, accessible uh, users. Inside of here, there's one caveat in, in, in here. If you do look, start looking at VPA groups, it's an alternative to the VPA that's currently available. So you either use the VPA groups or you use the uh, and the basic VPA. It's something you, once you turn the VPA groups on, you no longer use the traditional VPAs. But you can get a lot of the features and functionalities that you are using in that uh, over in the, the VPA groups. So it's not that big of a, a, con, uh, of a, of a loss. Um, what this allows you to also do is be able to um, easily map it to different components, whether it's to tables or to whatever it's going to be, equipment. And then once you map it, you can set that restriction up and then group that restriction and that mapping together and then assign it to that user or that role. So therefore, it's a lot easier because you can be able to manage it uh, through many different components. Um, so with that being said, uh, it is a centralized uh, single repository of restrictions, which is really nice because you don't have to repeat the restrictions. One thing you can do inside of here is also do binding expressions. So binding expressions allows you to be able to uh, put a macro in there and be able to pull from that macro, very similar to how you used to be able to do that in the roles. Remember, you're in the, in the roles VPA, you were able to pull from the option one and option two. You can do the same sort of thing here as well. Easy to administrate. Uh, we have the capability of reusing lists uh, or restrictions. So we can come up with a restriction and then reuse it again and again and again. And that's really a big a piece of power to that VPA concept is the ability to reuse your restrictions. 
last but not least, easy to combine. Uh, so we can actually start reducing the amount of roles in which you guys use by using this VPA group concept. Because a lot of clients had a lot of roles and the roles sometimes delineated the VPAs versus using a group-based concept, you may be able to reduce that because you may have more flexible criteria that allows you to reduce those roles and those restrictions. So that, again, something to consider uh, and be able to do that. But again, this is a new feature and functionality that Arcos has come with to help you guys. If you're currently using VPAs, this may be something you want to look at is the ability to group together, which makes your job as a system admin a little bit easier when you have to go and make a change to that VPA. So therefore, that's something to uh, consider as a new feature and function. Last topic is the home page editor. Uh, this is a very popular one, especially as of late. Uh, in the older previous releases, uh, you guys uh, may have seen the home page editor and started to roll it out and started using it. Well, that old editor uh, forced you to be able to uh, create code. You had to write XML and then load it up in the Archibos and, and do that. Well, a lot of us, A, didn't have programming knowledge, B, don't have the ability to have access to the web server and so on and so forth. Um, therefore, it's just too complicated. Nobody really rolled it out as part of that uh, because of those restrictions. So Arquebus, uh came out with a new, a new wizard in this release. And that wizard allows you guys, even though you don't have access to it or don't have programming knowledge, the ability to change those home pages. So you can go in and edit it. And now you have a new wizard, and this is the wizard here up on the screen that allows you guys to go in and personalize your home pages and come up with your new home pages. So therefore, you don't need access to the server and you don't need programming. It's a drag drop, full edit capability and software, and you guys can create as many pages as you want through this nice pretty GUI, save them and use them right away. So it's very easy to use them right away. No waiting, no pushing to the web server, uh, any of those components the ability to make changes easily. So that was a key one uh, that a lot of version 23 users are really liking this function because now they can implement home pages really easily uh, and it's really easy to set up your own new home page. That was my last topic of the day. So thanks for listening to me. Uh, I'm going to pass you over uh, and go from there. Thank you. Thanks, Ellie. Appreciate that. Okay, so next up we have Ellie. Um, He's going to uh, take us through some of some of the things that he saw, and I know a lot of it has to do with the environmental side of things. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, just give me a second. I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, we can see your screen. Just have to do the slideshow from the beginning. Uh, it's. Perfect. Oh. I don't believe it's showing on the screen. Showing both of them. <laughs> and there we go. So I'm here today to talk to you about uh, environmental uh, and risk uh, pillar that's found in Archibus. Uh, we heard Wayne at the beginning talk about interconnecting, um, sharing of data. Uh, and how can technology enable uh, facilities to make a better decision? Uh, we had Garrett bring up um, automated lookups and also talking about uh, the home pages and Jasmine was talking a lot about the operations console. This is all uh, an investment uh, by Arcobus to transform and continue to evolve the user experience and really address ease of use and make sure that the user community has um, the best tools available to make the right decisions at the right moment. And one of the philosophies of Archibus has been what's called an enterprise information model. And it's really focused on a one-stop shop. Uh, so a lot of you are probably still working with Process Navigator. But as you can see with uh, some of the features we've shown today, uh, usability continues to involve an Archibus uh, with the R&D investment and the, a focus on ease of use. And I'm glad to say that uh, one of the features uh, that has been brought to the environment and risk mitigation pillar of Archibus, uh, typically when we talk about that uh, set of activities, we're talking about uh, featuring and functionalities within Archibus within three aspects, which is compliance, uh, sustainability, and hazardous materials. Uh, so Arcobus has released um, its um, 
its console uh, for um, uh, energy management and for the sustainability side. And also it's releasing in the next release uh, a very neat new tool uh, for uh, doing uh, surveys, uh, which I'm going to quickly present today. So when we're talking about uh, interconnecting and leveraging the data, um, we all have a data analysis challenge. Facility managers today are sitting on a lot of data from energy, from building ops, from meters, from building information management systems, from coming from a whole variety of different systems. Well, the beauty of Arcobus is uh, leveraging that data and uh, making uh, the right decisions at the right moment that benefits the company, leveraging that data. Uh, so when we're talking about uh, the energy console, uh, it's meant to be used by anyone who has a responsibility towards uh, sustainability, uh, from all energy users to the executive and to the upper uh, middle management. Uh, it's an ability to uh, correlate and view all the data concerning uh, energy, and again, uh, allowing people to make the right decision at the right moment. Uh, and really uh, by, uh, hopefully uh, quantifiable ROI uh, based on the data that's being collected. So what does it look like? Uh, here's a screenshot of the energy console itself. Uh, there's a focus on the different sources of energy being tracked. Uh, it's a combination of um, dashboards, GIS, and uh, our client's data. Uh, there's a whole slew of uh, key performance indicators that come out of the box now where you're able to measure and track uh, comparable year-over-year -year, uh, heat maps, a uh, whole variety of uh, key performance indicators that come with energy, but it really is a one-stop shop when it comes to energy consumption. Um, so it's a console which permits you to drill through to uh, a lot of data. This is a drill through down to an actual building profile uh, and the comparison of its uh, water usage. Uh, you can also drill down to uh, uh, comparable um, uh, use. Uh, this one in particular talks about the water usage in the past 12 months. And you can start even looking at water usage by, or energy usage or any type of the energies uh, by complex systems. Uh, so here you're seeing it by bowling, by the cooling tower uh, for landscaping. So you can really start um, measuring and tracking uh, usage, whether it's energy, whether it's water, or your carbon footprint, um, by uh, systems, by labs, by departments, by floors. Uh, so the ability to really slice and dice uh, the entire uh, usage of energy uh, that a, a real property sits on and collects today one way or another. So if, um, and this is the answer to make those decisions of finding um, who are your, um, what are your problems areas and what are not your problems areas. And naturally there is an integration with GIS as well. So you can see if ever you have a campus with multiple locations, uh, right on the screen uh, uh, by KPI, your good performers and your bad performers. And again, all with drill through uh, capability. So a brand new console uh, for energy management. Um, and to help um, uh, gather the information, um, there's another tool, um, and, but it's a lot more than just gathering information. Um, Arcobus has now completed a, uh, a new tool, and I think this is really cool. It's a survey tool. Um, and it, it can play in a lot of areas. Uh, but it's been designed mostly to be able to verify and update uh, compliance levels. Um, you can also use it to um, gather information uh, like metering readings or indicators uh, of usage. Uh, but it's really about uh, trends and patterns. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities here. I know by getting to show you the actual uh, feature, you'll understand a lot better, better its power. Uh, so here's a survey, uh, the main uh, screen, um, and you are able to uh, create a survey, a uh, series of questions, and there is the opportunity to, uh, for each question to define 
uh, what type of question it is, if it's multiple choice or it's a capture of a numeric value or text and what are the text responses, uh, you'll be able to assign weights uh, uh, to these questions so that when the answers come back, it all gets correlated properly and you can see all your answers in the form of a heat map and make effective decisions. Um, there will be templates uh, available uh, that you can start with. Uh, but this allows you for many different business reasons. Here we have um, a questionnaire uh, or set of questionnaires around the hospital environment tour. So if you can imagine um, if all housekeeping closets are locked as one type of questions, all electric plants and closets are, are sealed as well. Uh, our areas used by patient staff neat and clean. There's a lot of different possibilities to these surveys. Uh, it's an opportunity to correlate, uh, ask questions, and get feedback. Uh, so it could go as far as uh, uh, when you have construction or renovation projects and you want your foreman to do surveys on the work being performed and correlate it back. Uh, and um, this is available. Um, these questionnaires are forms, so you can have them available over the web. This is a sample questionnaire that somebody would see over the web. And naturally, they're also available uh, on uh, mobile platforms. Uh, so no, not tethered necessarily to a workstation, but the surveys can be completed uh, either on uh, smartphones or uh, uh, pads. So this is a powerful new tool which allows you to go out and correlate uh, uh, questions uh, that you would have uh, for verification purposes or compliance purposes. With only 10 minutes, that was the two features I wanted to highlight on, but it's sure that on the environmental and the risk, there's a lot more new features as well in the next version. Uh, but those were the two main features. So I appreciate your time, and I pass it back to Ayanna. Okay, everyone. Well, um, connecting the dots and realizing the possibilities. That uh, was the theme of Archibus's Nexus. Uh, this year and in communications um, in addition to the super fun client night get-togethers uh, which this year included a river ride and monuments tour and old Ebbets grill um, and the AUG like the user group networking as well as the business partner licensing stuff that I kind of attend for I also look for messaging and key value um, statements and the resources for our clients our prospects and our team um, to to provide throughout the year um, in his opening address wise Cho the CEO of Archibus um, talked about the evolution over the years um, there that their success has stemmed from their core values and that's excellence commitment quality and innovation um, it's a continuous supporting organizations make them more productive and um, uh, which is why they have a strong position in the marketing marketplace um, and essentially Archibus helps make sense of business data so uh, they're in good shape going forward um, and we they, he talked again about making um, us activists, um, our clients activists, and heroes in your not only your job, but in your department, in your organization, and in your communities, and basically in the, in the uh, world at large. So it's a very uh, inspirational thing for those that go, um, you know, Bruce Forbes was a driving force behind, uh, behind the growth of Archibus over the years, and Wise chose definitely uh, continuing on in that path. Um, and um, Archibus is a common platform that offers dynamic data uh, rather than sort of siloed, disjointed, um, and, delay and offering delayed reporting in current Excel sheets and different disparate systems. So it's really exciting to go and see on the main stage um, people talking about, uh, about these things. Um, I've pulled out kind of what I think are the uh, trends, um, like WISE, uh, Steve Segarra, and other Archibus staff and users across the globe share their vision, their successes and challenges on stage and in the plenaries and more intimate kind of uh, conversations over the three or four days. Um, these on, this, on the, um, on my PowerPoint there, you've got the sort of the biggest trends facing our industry um, and, uh, and 
fortunately, ARCABUS can help and support uh, you and prepare your organizations to face some of these trends. Um, obviously, there's an increased pressure and visibility for, uh, from the CEO down. Um, it's a creating expanding market. There's a lot of players in the, in the um, market, a lot of kind of point solutions that are coming out. Fortunately, ARCABUS has a lot of um, uh, things built into it that will uh, provide uh, the clients the best, the best solution out there. Uh, the top-down analytics, so people want the dashboards, they want to be able to make the database decisions. Um, that's, that was uh, mentioned over and over again. Uh, integration of data systems. Um, we talked a couple years ago, sort of big data, now it's more organ like organic. Um, these, the next uh, point has all the different things that our, our stuff has been called, like there's been FM, there's the CAFM, you know, computer-aided facility management stuff, there's integrated workplace management systems, now it's enterprise, um, you know, or corporate real estate portfolio management, or EIM, as, as Ellie was talking about. It's, uh, it's important to know that these kinds of controls and dashboards and, and workflows and processes are going to, are all building and continuously evolving, um, wider and wider um, uh, responsibility, I guess, but also wider and wider oversight and control, which is uh, giving our clients uh, really an edge in the, in the workplace. So um, another thing that's really interesting is the activity-based workplace um, or alternate, alternative workplace, uh, being able to be uh, work where you want, uh, in little cafe style, more collaboration and all that kind of stuff, which makes it really hard for FM people to, you know, where, how am I going to track this? So that brings in things like IoT sensors and, and, um, and um, being able to, to do that. I've got some slides that go into that a little bit more later. But um, other, other trends are faster global deployments. People want it now. Um, they want to be able to cross time zones, currencies, things like that. And Fortunately, Arcabus is, is well positioned for all those kinds of things. M mobility and energy are, are super um, important, as well as the visualization through BIM and Revit, like the 3D modeling, GIS, being able to tie it into like local population stuff and be able to really, really get at analytics. Um, there's obviously different deployments. People are kind of migrating away from on-premise um, and and um, and it's really becoming cloud and SaaS um, or, or hosted um, options. At least anybody that's considering getting Archibus now are considering all the options. And these options are available. They're being used now. They're working uh, well and they're safe and secure. So there's other things like vendor outsourcing was talked about and uh, capital project management, tying all the the financial, strategic financial analysis into the mix. Um, not just what your buildings are doing, but how much are they costing, how much are, how much, um, are certain programs, you know, tracking your, um, tracking your um, environmental footprint and those kinds of things. And asset management, you know, taking it right from the cradle to the grave. They want it from the shipping. People are looking now at wanting to be able to, from the loading dock when the item comes in, or even before that when it's being ordered, uh, right through to disposal or disinvestment. An asset can be anything, including buildings, people, uh, pieces of equipment, you know, those kinds of things. So it's, a, it's an exciting time to be in, um, in the industry, and it's an exciting time to be at Nexus to hear, you know, all of these kinds of things being talked on a real, gra real granular level, like people are really actually, you know, faced with this and, and really, um, you know, it's, it's exciting to see how they're answering it with different tools. Um, this go, leads into uh, the, you know, the enterprise asset management, the capital on operations. These are the four main, um, the four main things that I see are the biggest challenges met with the latest suite. Um, so you've got the enterprise asset management, your capital and operational costing uh, through operational planning boards now with, with Archibus. Uh, the shared workspace, I just spent a bit of time on that, but that's a, that's a screen of a well-developed, um, you know, people organizing themselves by, um, by activity or by project or by group. 
Um, there's the environmental and energy metrics that uh, that Ellie just spent a bit of time on. And then there's all the dynamic stuff about the uh, dynamic data for mobile, BIM, Revit, GIS integration. Um, the IoT systems being able to, you know, there was a fair amount of interest and excitement over the sensors that are being used to track actual visual utilization um, and tying that to space and data and occupancy information. Um, and then, you know, sort of in terms of the mobility, you know, gone now is the flash, um, moving more to the HTML, uh, making things faster. There's authentication level layers uh, in the mobile to continue to make Archibus as secure as possible and, and the choice for the hosted and hybrid or SaaS cloud options. Disruptions everywhere. I mean, there's, uh, I talked briefly about the point solutions. Um, with 35 years of best practices um, and, and a lot of people, peers in the industry, um, it's, it's neat to see that the big guys are all still, you know, still working and pushing the envelope and acquiring additional modules and making them all sort of work together. Um, it is the biggest challenge for Archibus, I think, and, and it's come out sort of in the business partner meetings and that is just overcoming our own success. People get comfortable, they see it as the space and operations tool and don't really, you know, get, don't necessarily have the, um, uh, the, um, to the time or, or resources to, to make sure, to think of that full enterprise uh, system that is possible and, and that. So, um, so I think that's probably the biggest challenges that, uh, that, that Archibus faces is just to overcoming what it was to what it is now. Um, certainly on the uh, main stage, we saw all kinds of award-winning organizations like Red Hat, uh, School District of Philadelphia, there was the Presbyterian group, there was the uh, Johnston County uh, from Kansas. Um, as well as our own National Research Council doing their roadmap exercise and the Calgary Board of Education talking about their savings and successes with Archibus. Um, one of the neatest things that I saw, and uh, I'll wrap this up pretty quick because I'm, you know, um, was Kristen Kurland uh, from Carnegie Mellon. Um, she was, she talked about the evolution of Pittsburgh and the smart city kind of move that's more than just data. It was the way that the whole, uh, it was tied to economic prosperity um, controls, like there was clean air and water. They needed to get buy-in from the citizens and leaders and other depart and other, um, um, other organizations, not just the universities, but they, you know, architectural firms and all kinds of things. And they basically created a, a whole uh, revolution um, and uh, and we're going to see more and more of this in the next in the next year or so. Um, on screen, I've got uh, the enterprise uh, the ability for Archibus to as an open architecture system to be able to connect to other systems of record. Your Active Directory and SAPs. I mean, it's a well-trod path. Your Oracle integrations. Your um, um, your financials. These things are used tested tools and wizards to be able to uh, convert information um, and, and sort of create that bigger picture uh, for you, for your uh, various departments, and for your, uh, for your leaders, for your CEOs and, and that. Um, and lastly, I think probably the most exciting is that Archibus is going to be um, pushing out that mar that marketing more. There's tweeting and they're, they're have a Facebook page and LinkedIn. Uh, you can follow them. Lots of stuff are being released on YouTube now. So if you're interested in additional things, there's, there's that. The foundation is strong and has been doing some really good work and they have a Facebook page that you guys should like. Um, and basically spreading the word through white papers, case studies, there's videos now that I have, I can share and distribute, just helping you make the case within your site organizations for other, other modules or other expanded 
uh, functionality is really what it comes down to. Um, Horizon sponsored the Wi-Fi at the conference, so we had a chance to sh showcase our 25 Hot Topic videos that we're very proud of, that people can download um, for a price, these ones. Um, we are going to be rolling out some uh, this year that uh, I want you guys to keep your eyes open for, because we uh, plan to release some of those um, uh, you know, every couple of weeks. Um, and uh, also one of the other things I wanted to mention was that there are some hidden talents. In fact, uh, Wayne Lico is uh, a resident IOP Internet of Things poet. So he uh, entertained the, uh, I don't know, 500 people in the room with, uh, with a very cool poem that we'll hopefully share in my next newsletter. Um, so what's next? Next year, the conference is going to be in Boston, Massachusetts. So hopefully it's a little closer to home. People can drive down. Uh, maybe you can get some approvals. I do have some information. Um, if you're having trouble getting to these conferences and need some justification um, material for whoever you need to uh, get approval from, um, I, I do have some stuff that I can help. So just, just message me. It's Iana. Iciati at horizon.ca. Um, we've got an, a Canadian virtual user group event coming up. Um, it's probably going to be in June, mid-June. Uh, there's a couple dates proposed and we're bringing three user groups together for sort of a three-hour deeper dive into some of this stuff, but also um, some other things that'll be really exciting. So if you guys are interested, um, keep an eye on the next uh, uh, for your your inbox or come to the website or, you know, or um, we also are at Horizon One in the, on Twitter, so um, those kinds of announcements are always put out on there as well. Um, we'll likely be having another government group, uh, user group in September. Um, we've got hot, hot topic training ongoing all the time um, and custom training, including the uh, old standbys like your fundamental systems admin and programming, um, along with specific targeted domain training like the um, like space or ops and like work you know building operations on demand or preventative maintenance or any of that stuff if you guys want to book something let us know um, reach out you can go sales.ca or you, um, at horizon um, or you can contact us individually and we'll get you to the right the right dates and the right options and the right stuff uh, we're also looking at doing some accelerated news. Uh, hopefully a blog will be coming out of this um, and a, perhaps uh, some talk to the tech chats. So thank you from uh, Ellie, uh, myself, Jasmine, Wayne, and, uh, and Garrett. As always, we welcome your uh, input and feedback. And again, you can contact us at any time. Um, and uh, I hope that you guys have found some value in, in today's um, sort of recap, and we'll look for you and talk to you soon. Okay, enjoy your day. Thanks very much for joining us today.